and gluten-free. Good evening. Uh, on behalf of the uh, 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 Central Psychology Network, I'm Spencer Williams, the uh, president. I'm happy to welcome you to this uh, wonderful joint uh, uh, conference and the wonderful joint banquet that we're having. And I'd like to ask please that people take their seats so they can begin the serving. And I think Lily would like to say Good evening, everyone. You know what? We have had three days of feasting on the concept of meaning, applications of meaning, everything, you know, just because we have superb present our keynote speakers, great presenters, and quality people that make this a miracle. And I'm just so pleased that you are here, and as I said in the earlier, it's like a family reunion. You know, it's but then we have a new partner that we have, a CPN, and what is CPN? Constructivist Psychology Network. So now IMPM and CPN are walking together, and tonight is time that we will celebrate. No, 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 not exactly because Paul has a PowerPoint tonight. <laughs> you can't get away from meaning, you know. <laughs> We live every moment, we walk every moment, we eat meaningfully. So, um, would you like to take grace? Would that be okay? It's my pleasure to pray. Would you bow your heads with me? Let's be pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for your provision for us. We thank you for these times together to enrich our learning and grow our awareness of you and of one another and of ourselves and how we can better improve meaning in this world in our lives and through our lives. Lord, thank you how you have provided for us again and again. This food is a reminder that you are a good God who provides for us over and over. So we give thanks. We give thanks tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. So, so then people are in and out of the lot. Yes, we just got to do the silent auction. Oh, it's a good idea. Good idea. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll do the silent auction at the end. And as always, And it's almost rude to stop this conversation. And you have been listening, sitting, learning, and now finally you have a chance to sit down and talk and share. Unfortunately, we wanted to calm everything within two hours, and we started late. So uh, if you don't mind, we're going to start the celebration. First, I think we're going to do an achievement award. And we have three uh, life achievement awards. And the first one is for Dr. Stanley Krippner. And it's <laughs> And Melanie Jordan is going to present. I thought that meant I was off the hook that Lillian was going to do the uh, do a few words for Dr. Krippner. Uh, so as uh, uh, my name is Melanie Alsager, and I'm the uh, uh, CEO of Sunshine Coast House Center, one of the sponsors of the meeting conference, a proud sponsor, and. Uh, 
Uh, as, uh, as Jeff Thompson mentioned in uh, his introduction to Dr. Kuttner at yesterday's keynote, uh, if, if you have an hour or so, you could uh, review his long list of accomplishments and his contributions. Uh, but I hope tonight it will suffice to say that he has made significant contributions in the field of humanistic psychology and parapsychology. Uh, in the field of hypnosis and of dreams, and more recently, he's doing some much needed work uh, with sufferers of PTSD. I will refer to my notes here because we rushed a little bit getting me up here. Am I? I appreciate that very much. So, um, I. Oh, anyways, okay, so I. Uh, uh, in the, one thing I would say, he has uh, five Lifetime Achievements Awards. So this is his fifth tonight. And uh, you think that he's done, but he's not done. Uh, he's got uh, a list on his website of uh, long, long projects in progress and many, many more things in the works. And uh, it reminds me of a, 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 a book, a conversation my brother and I had a book about genius. And uh, it, it reflected on how all the great geniuses had shared a commonality, which is they never retired. And that great genius grows ever brighter through the years, and its contribution lasts long, long, long into the future. So I think we can definitely consider Dr. Kutner a member of the Never Retiring Great Genius Club. And uh, on a personal note, I, I, I would just notice how much time that you spent with all the attendees this week and what a pleasure it must have been for everybody to spend some time with Dr. Kripner. He was very generous in talking to people at lunchtime. And so uh, I, and I, I think his ability and his willingness to connect at a human level with so many people, given how busy and brilliant he is, uh, is shows what I, I, I definitely a worthwhile recipient of this Lifetime Achievement Award. So thank you, Dr. Kutner, and uh, do, thank you, Lily. So join me, meeting conference, and thank you, Dr. Kutner. You're going to say a few words? Yeah, thank you very much. This comes as quite a surprise to me. I can think of any number of people who have actually done more significant research on this topic than I have, some of whom who are here tonight, but they haven't lasted as long as I have. And I would sort of challenge your notion about retirement. Uh, I could be paid off to retire. And whenever I get an award that comes as a surprise like this, I remember my conversation with my old friend Albert Ellis, who some of you probably heard speak, and his inimitable way of phrasing things. And he won a major award from the American Psychological Association. And I went up to him afterwards and I said, Al, oh, congratulations. He's now the best of three I got around to it. Well, I have a different reaction to this award, and I'm remembering what Catherine Hepburn said when she won her fourth Academy Award. And she said, well, well, you do. If you live long enough, anything can happen. And this has happened tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have the privilege to hand over this Lifetime Achievement Award to Dr. Robert Nehemiah, Bob Nehemiah. If you want, he is the authority in, yes, grief, um, what else? This is a doctor of death. I'll tell you what. If you go to Google, you will find him everywhere. But here we are. You know, it's amazing. He has supported IMPM Meaning Conference since the year 2000. So to me, he's part of the IMPM family. Thank you for your support. And he is, um, you know, I always say, who you are is more important than what you say or what you know. And he live 
what he teaches, what he believes, and you know, like achievements. So what? You know, how many pages of your visa or the publication? But who he is is more important because that influence everyday interaction with people. We will appreciate him very much. Well, then, thank you for that. And I, I'm certainly consoled by those words that who I am is more important than what I say, given that Paul specifically instructed me not to say anything other than thank you. So, I like the eloquence of uh, the remarks said by Stan Kutner, and I can only say that uh, perhaps by the time I'm your age, I'll be as eloquent. So, Thank you for this recognition, for this honor, and especially for the friendship that was made possible, this meaningful work. Be well. Thank you, Bob. And the next award presented by Paul Wong to Dr. Chi Yun Lin. Grace. For many years, she is well known and well respected in Taiwan and Asia as an educator and researcher in life and death education. And uh, her proudest creation is the Greek Garden. Now, if you went to Taiwan National University, you will see her creation. It's a it's a perfect combination of the art of sculpture, the beauty of landscape, and the process of meaning making. So the garden provides place for people to create their lives, to go through the different stations, and then when come out, to feel better. Thank you for that. And do for that. Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, you do not say anything, but you can say something. I'm so glad to be here and receive this hour. Thank you. Uh, I would like to say thank you. Thank you to Paul Wang. Uh, Dr. Paul Wang is the uh, first person to introduce uh, personal meaning, uh, the concept uh, of personal meaning to Thailand. He's the first man. He is our mentor. And I would like to say thank you to uh, Dr. Nima. Uh, she he provides as many uh, uh, workshops um, to teach us about meaning, reconstruction, theory, and practice. Um, um, here, uh, there, a, there are many experts here, so I would like uh, to know each of you. And maybe one day you can come to Taiwan to share your expertise. Thank you. <laughs> you know, Dr. Niemeyer is a rock star in Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> and Brent? Brent Potter? There she is. Hi, my name is Brent Potter, and it is my pleasure. I was one of the adjudicators for the uh, student uh, award. So uh, let's see, if I could ask the people uh, to come up, as I call them, if we could hold our applause till the end. And also there was a tie in there, as I'm sure you saw on page 9 of the uh, brochure. And that's because the scores were so completely close. They were all really, really good. So honorable mentions go to Ron Defoe and Yu Ping Lee. 
Uh, third place goes to Kafir Ifra. Second place is tied for Jackie Sinard and Arthur Braden. I thought I was not going to ask that And first place goes to Brian Tian. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. And we have two travel grants and plus. We are going to provide travel grant scholarship for these two people to win this award. They have to run an essay about the plan, the contribution to many research. Can you hear me? Yeah. And so we have two winners, uh, Avalon Abina. What's Abina? Abina and Joseph. Joseph. The last four award is for first scholars from Thailand. You have Lee Hugh, Lee Hugh, Lee Hugh, Lee Thank you. We'd like to take this opportunity to say some thank you words. So, um, we'd like to thank Paul, Lillian, and Karina who make this uh, scholarship. We feel very honorable with it. So, we'd like to express our genuine appreciation to your generous contribution to the scholar world for Thailand students. So with your kind support, we have received the honor, and we will encourage us to continue the study with all our efforts. 
And we're hoping like, to have you contribute to your team and better on the work in those backers. And your energy and positive attitudes inspire us and your dedication and hard work are really appreciated. We will never forget your example. And we would like also to express sincere gratitude and heartfelt thanks for all you do. Thank you again for the warm and loving support. Thank you very much. It's a great honor for me to uh, be able to stand in front of you tonight and present the awards for the Constructive Psychology Network. Um, we're, I will be a little sorry because, uh, unfortunately, uh, two of our, our major honorees were not able to attend the conference tonight. But our, uh, our Stephanie Lewis Carter Exceptional and Dedicated Service Award uh, has gone to Dr. Sarah Bridges of the University of Memphis a previous president of the Constructive Psychology Network and a tireless worker in support of the association. And uh, we, the award was recently named after Stephanie Lewis Carter, who had received the award at our last conference and unfortunately who passed away about a year ago. So we had named the award after her. Our distinguished contribution award for this year goes to Dr. Brian Gaines, a uh, retired professor from the University of Calgary who uh, lives on uh, Vancouver Island now in retirement. Uh, again, a very uh, long, outstanding contribution in many, many areas to constructive psychology, including the establishment of constructive psychology network. We were hoping he would be able to join us, but unfortunately his health did not permit his ability to uh, make it over here to join us this evening. But we really uh, appreciate both of them for their awards, and they'll be getting their packs their, uh, in the mail. Okay. Um, Next, I'd like to present uh, our student uh, competition, student paper competition award. This is an award that we give every year. Uh, any uh, students who are presenting papers at our conference may submit a, uh, a copy of their paper and be judged by, by two independent judges and rank ordered. And it's a, a great pleasure for me, particularly tonight, to be able to present uh, this year's uh, student competition paper award to Rafael Ayala from. California State University, San Marcos, who who just happens to have been my master's student. So, thank you. Congratulations. All right. Um, one of the other things that we customarily do um, at this time, and this is something that is, uh, I think, extraordinarily special uh, this particular time due to the uh, complexities and additional work that went, in, what went into having this wonderful joint conference between these two groups, and that is uh, for Marla Buchanan, the program coordinator and director for CPN, we very much want to thank you for the extraordinary work that you have done, the tremendous effort that you have done. And, uh, We know that two years ago when you agreed to host the next conference here, we had no idea that it was going to turn into such a grand affair. So you have uh, engaged in service well above and beyond the call of duty. And we'd like to present you with uh, a gift of uh, a token of our appreciation. We, uh, we hope that these uh, items will allow you to uh, have a little bit of restful time and take care of yourself and pamper yourself a bit because you deserve it totally. Well, it, it's been a, a great honor for me to be able to serve as the president of the Constructive Psychology Network for these past two years. This conference concludes my term as president, so I'm looking forward to uh, introducing you to our incoming president, uh, Dr. Colleen Stanley, and I'd like to ask her to come up and just say a few words of introduction. Hi, everybody. I, um, it's funny because I think I've uh, made a lot of new friends in the last few 
days. Um, and it's funny because I think Lillian Wong, she uses the word family a lot to describe her group. Which is funny because we use the word family to describe our group a lot. And yet I feel like in a room full of long lost relatives, because I think we all connected really well over the last couple of days. And, um, and I hope that we keep these connections alive over the next weeks and days and months and years. And I hope that we really take the time uh, to meet and to grow together as a bigger, stronger group. So that's what I hope to do in the years ahead. And I hope that you all join me and that we'll uh, see a lot of success in the years ahead. So thank you very much and um, see you soon. I'd also like to, like to mention that the silent auction for the, uh, the Tibetan charity, or I'm sorry, the Nepali charity, excuse me, uh, will continue to go on and continue after we finish with the, uh, the magic show and Dr. Wong's presentation. So uh, please feel free to uh, go in the, and up your bids a bit for the silent auction. Thank you. One of the other traditions that we've had in the Constructive Psychology Network conferences for quite some time has been uh, the honor of having uh, one of our, our members, Dr. Joe Ephraim, who has uh, been a recipient of our Lifetime Achievement Award and uh, who gave us the kind of, uh, keynote address uh, earlier this afternoon, also uh, moonlights as a magician. So we're delighted that he's agreed to do his magic show for us again. Is there anything? I'll turn it over to, to Joe. How often do you get a chance to uh, turn yourself on and not get in trouble with the authorities? <laughs> So, it's great to be back here in Vancouver. The last time I was here, though, I did feel like an ugly American because I knew so little about Canadian politics, Canadian customs, Canadian geography. So this time, before I came, I decided to memorize the capitals of all the provinces and territories. So just, just name a, a, a province or a territory, I'll tell you the capital. Prince Edward Island. P. <laughs> I can do them all. You know, you know. So would you um, would you think of a number from one to a thousand or as high as you feel comfortable going? So you have one? All right, I'm gonna write down my prediction about what your answer will be. Okay. Now, if my prediction matches your answer, would that be a good trick? It'd be a first for me, is what it would be. <laughs> All right. Just a simple yes or no, we'll get this. Were you thinking of the number 972? No. Your answer correctly predicted. <laughs> I want to do a trick for you with three pieces of rope, one long piece, one middle-sized piece, and one small piece. Would you examine this, make sure it's just ordinary rope, no hidden hidden trap doors, no hidden assistance, no noise, just regular rope. And would you, madam, have a look at this one? And would you have a look at this one? 
look okay? Does it look okay? Yeah, otherwise I wouldn't have given this to you to examine. I mean, I'm not a fool, you know. Oh, this is the big one. Who has the tiny one? Paul does. Thank you, Paul. And who has the middle size? Thank you. Now, I usually don't have to point this out. But sometimes somebody is paying strict attention and they don't realize these ropes are three different sizes. And if you don't notice that, then what I'm about to do is to be even more pointless than usual. So I gather at the end of the long, of the long piece, the middle-sized piece, and the small piece, and I say the magic word, stretch 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 I, I came up with those on my own. <laughs> on the right stretch, slowly, gradually, and therefore entertainingly, to become exactly the same size. Three ropes of the same size. <laughs> Rope number one doesn't stretch, doesn't shrink, not to be confused with rope number two, doesn't stretch, doesn't shrink, not to be confused with rope number three. Now, I don't expect you to take my word for it. <coughs> so I'm going to, uh, you know, maybe you think that we're using, confusing you with slide of hand or even worse, constructivist mumbo jumbo. So I put this rope aside and I'm going to tie these two ropes together. Like that. And I'm going to tie these two ropes together because I don't want there to be any funny business. And I want you to see that we indeed have three ropes of equal length tied together. Even if that's the case, when I gather these up, and I say the magic words, shrinko, shrinko, shrinko. That was an easy choice after the evening. The ropes return to their original sizes. One small rope. One long rope. And one medium sized rope. So don't have to say I didn't show you the ropes. Uh, Jack, could you come up and help? <coughs> right where you are. Um, Okay, it has a sign on it. Maybe I'll raise it a little bit. Huh? All right, I was trying to get into my pocket here to take my wallet out. <coughs> I was always told, you said, put, put your money where your mouth is. It's not a good idea. First of all, it tastes terrible, and it's so sweet. But I am willing to bet on something that hasn't happened yet, and I'm going to put my wallet here so that you know it's here for the entire time of this particular operation. Do you play five? Um, Might have to be done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to get rid of the jokers. We're going to mix these up a little bit. Oops. Now, what I'd like you to do is simply cut off a small pile of cards, 10, 15, 20, not much more than 20, and put them right over here like that. Okay? Okay. Now, I want you to take a guess at how many cards 
you think you cut off. You know, client estimation is a very serious, among gamblers, a very serious skill. How many do you think you cut off? Thirteen. Let's see how, you, how well you do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, pretty close. Now, since you had a couple more than you thought you had, would you like to put one or two back? Go ahead. <laughs> Good. Now, when you leave here and you go to your suite, go to your room, you're going to say to yourself, what if I hadn't put any back? So would you like to now add maybe one or two back? Sure. Or maybe even subtract another one. That's good. You're going to go to bed tonight. And you're going to say, as you're getting into bed, you're going to say, well, I answered that one more. What if I hadn't added that one more? Would you like to? I think I'm good. You think you're good. You're going to wake up in the middle of the night. <laughs> That's true. Do you want to add one or two, subtract one or two? Are you okay, you okay with what it is? All right, I'm going to give you one more choice. I'm going to turn these into two panels. Okay? Are you left-handed or right-handed? Right-handed. We're using your left hand. Okay. The distance comes out the hand of fate. You buy that? I just made it up. Yeah. All right. Take your left hand. Let it hop, hover over these two panels and see where it feels more comfortable. Like this? Mm-hmm. Which one does it feel more comfortable over? That one. So would that be your choice? That would be my choice. You're sure? Yes. Okay. So you're not interested in these cards. You're interested in that. No, my wallet has been here the entire time. In my wallet, I have a card. I put it there earlier, and it's from a different deck. This is a red deck. That's a blue deck. This card is the Jack of Spades. I'd like you to turn over the top card and show it to the group. But before you do that, okay. I want you to remember, you cut as many as you want. You added, you subtracted, you chose which card. I wonder if these cards could possibly match. Thank you. A big, a big hand for Jack. <laughs> now, this next trick I, that I, I'm going to show you, I'm going to do it for you, and then if you like it, I'll show you how it's done. Fair enough? <laughs> It's not that good. <laughs> and all you need to do this trick is a piece of red tissue paper. Actually, any color will do, as long as it's red. And what we're going to do is we're going to tear up the paper, two and two, then one is two, two and two is four, one four is eight. Eight and eight is. Did, you, did I mention there's three types of people? Those that in the world, those that are good at math, and those that aren't. Then we're going to squeeze the bits of paper together. We're going to wiggle the bits, and we're going to blow on the bits. And when we do that, the paper will reunite and become a single.
I'm telling you how to do that. But look, it's, it's not a big problem because I was going to explain it anyway, right? But if, what if you were performing for real important groups? You know, like chiropractors or... <laughs> then you pick up the piece, you wiggle it, you blow on it, and with a little luck, it turns once again into the same way. <laughs> Now, I said I would explain this, and I'm going to do exactly that. You actually need two pieces of tissue paper. I was going to make a comment about the group, but I don't think I'm going to do it. And it's, uh, it's a good idea if they're both the same color. Because if you tear up like a red sheet, and when you restore the screen, you get a completely different effect. Looks very suspicious. But that's exactly what I'm going to do because I want you to see how this operates. So I'm first going to roll this up into a small ball, like so. And if it's small enough, you can hide it in your, in your hand. You have to make sure you keep your hand in a very natural position. <laughs> Like we all know it's there. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to put it here so you can see it, and then you'll be able to see the change when it happens. And then I have my green sheet. And what we're going to do is tear up the green sheet. Now, when you're ready to make the switch, it's going to be kind of a little joke. It sort of distracts people's attention. So, for instance, I'll say, what Rick Warren phone? No. <laughs> and then while people are distracted, you know, you change the one for the other. And then all there is to do is to open the red sheet and scroll it up. So it's in good shape. Well, it's not here on the Now there's one problem. Sooner or later, people are going to notice you have all these little green pieces. So you have to do what magicians call cleaning up. So you tell another little joke, you know, like, uh, what did they say about the restaurant on the moon? Good food, but no atmosphere. Uh, where would you find a dog with no legs? Right where you left them. And while people are distracted, you, you know, you tuck these secretly under your vest if you're wearing a vest. If you don't have a vest, what you have to do is wiggle the pieces, throw on them, and it will turn into <laughs> now. For the last thing that I want to do for you, normally I work alone, but this is a special occasion. So I want to ask um, our incoming president and a, and, a, and a skilled conjurer in her own right to come join me. Carolyn? Okay, so we're going to do this exactly the way we rehearsed it? Oh yeah, we didn't have time for the rehearsal. Right? All right, we're going to just make it up as we go along. I'm just going to my latest invention, an invisible duck. This is the world's first invisible duck. 
or at least if there are any others, I haven't seen them. So what I'd like you to do is take the invisible deck and give the cards a second. All right, wait. Don't blame yourself. This is my point entirely. I should have reminded you to take them out of the box. Good. Give them a shuffle. Now you're going to go out in a moment and find somebody to pick a card out of that invisible deck. So we look over this. It's like looking over a field of colorful flowers. A weed here and there, but we won't let that bag out. So go and find somebody and uh, one person and ask them if they could choose a card out of the invisible deck. Okay, ask them to hold it up so everybody can see. <laughs> and now I ask them to, we, to put the, careful now, they have to put the card back in the deck, but having turned it upside down so it will be the one card that's upside down in the deck. And then if you could throw the deck back up here. Yeah, 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 just throw it, yeah. Okay. It's now turned into a visible deck. Now, if it turns out that the card he picked is the only card that's upside down in this deck, you would be entitled to a big hand of big round of applause. On the other hand, by some strange, silly quirk, it's not the card that's turned up so bad. We couldn't blame the group from turning into a kind of angry mob that uh, drums you off the stage and perhaps out of the organization. So for the first time in a loud voice, what was the card that you picked? He picked the King of Hearts. You, you picked the, the King of Hearts, yes? You're mistaken. Yeah. You know, you, you, you have to understand how this trick works. <laughs> All right, we're going to let you. So, what, what did you say? The Two of Clubs. Okay. <laughs> we're looking. We're, we're looking for a reverse plan. Want to hold out your hands? That's the reverse card. In the moment, I'm going to ask you to take a peek, and if the news is good, you're going to show it to the group. Otherwise, make a run for it. Take a peek. What do you think? Looks good. Show it to the group. Thank you. A big hand for Colleen. And before you can say, is that all? Is that all? That's all. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Rebecca Alton. I'm a man of volunteer. A no magic trick. Thank you. Anybody? Come up here and do some stretching for all of us. Because we've been sitting here for a long time. Right? Would you? Anybody? Volunteers? No. <laughs> Don't be shy. I'm going to take a little bit and fall. 
Yeah. 